obviously I'm going to keep this brief and to the point. <laughs> but there are two things that I think that ought to be said that have everything to do with both this baptism of these two young ladies, but also about the, the feast that we're commemorating. It's called the Feast of the Presentation. And as Father Jim read in the Gospel reading, that's when Mary and Joseph came to present Jesus into the temple. That's what the law asked, and it was an act of dedication. In other words, what they were doing is literally taking the child before the high priest and, say, and saying, we want what God wants for this child. Let this child be under God's direction. Let this child be dedicated to the Lord. And in many ways, what we're doing here is a precise parallel to what they did. In the sense that Dakota and Victoria are being presented not just to me, they're actually being presented to the Lord. For they as families to say, Lord, we want you to do what you want to do in the lives of these two. We want your will to be accomplished. And by virtue of saying that, they're also saying we're willing to do whatever it takes for us to help facilitate that as parents and godparents. Because you see, to make a dedication to the Lord is not just happening, this is point two, out, kind of out there in the wilderness somewhere. It's in the assembly of God's people. And notice what happened. When Mary and Joseph bring Jesus into the temple, guess what happens? God speaks to Simeon, an older man who was there, who comes over and literally speaks words from God about who Jesus is and about the direction of his life, and even gives a warning to his mother Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too, prophetically speaking about what would happen when she saw her son crucified. And then Anna, someone else comes up, and she's praising God. This is the answer to her prayers, and she prays. So too it is here in this baptism service. What's not happening is that these families are kind of wandering off their own, going someplace down on the beach all by themselves and baptizing this child. They're doing it in this manner with their fellow parishioners because we believe with all of our heart that it is here among the gathered people of God that God moves and acts. In other words, the model is not we're just showing up and kind of getting our own little time alone with God and leaving, but we're actually interacting with each other. And it is in those relationships where we really do believe that God can move. So we're saying, when I ask you, will you do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their lives in Christ, and you say, we will, that's a commitment to be a part of a kind of interactive fellowship where they, you are going to be involved. You're praying for these two young ladies and their families. They're praying for others because that's the center of how God acts. When the church is healthy, there's exactly these kinds of interactive relationships where people care for, pray for, help out, and support people who are, are a part of this fellowship. So presentation, two parallels. One, these girls are being presented to God. First and foremost, for God to do what God will do in their lives. Secondly, these families, godparents, you as a congregation are saying, this is where this is happening. Therefore, we're here to say, as the liturgy says, we will. We will be a part of this too. We're not just going to look and say, oh, I'm sorry, they're having a hard time. The question becomes, if that is the case, Lord, what would you have me do? That's the commitment that we make, you see, to each other as interactive parts of this body. Who knows? Maybe at some point God might raise up somebody to be a kind of simian who prays prophetically in a way that actually has an impact on one of these girls' lives or somebody else. Or an Anna who's been praying all along and this, she see, is able to see the answer to her prayers. That's what this is. So we're not just commemorating what happened to Jesus. 2,000 years ago, we're actually flowing in the same stream. He actually is modeling something for us by allowing Mary and Joseph to, uh, to be guided by God for him to be presented in the temple. So that's where we are. We're in a new version of the temple. We're enacting a similar kind of dedication. And we're asking God to move 
And we're saying, we will too. That's what we're here to do. So let's continue to move forward in the baptism service.